Hello and good morning. Joe Justice here coming to you live on January 11th, 2023. We are well into the new year. We are almost halfway through the January, if you can believe it. Man, 2023 is going by fast already. And uh, next week, of course, this weekend, of course, we got a long weekend. I hope there's lots of skiers out there that are getting ready for the weekend and getting ready to have a good time. Uh, this whole week, we've been coming to you with uh, our coverage of CES, which happened over the weekend. We started out by talking about um, some of the, the big things going on in CES. We've been following CNET's coverage of CES. Of course, CES is uh, the Consumer Electronics Show. It's been going on in Las Vegas since the year 1967. And this year, it was held January 5th through 8th. And we are going to talk some more about some of the coverage and some of the exciting stuff going on at CES. So let's take a look at them. CES's 2023 must-see highlights. A flying car, a new gaming hand handheld, and a the, C the Tesla of the sea. All right, so here's some cool stuff that was coming out of CES from CNET. Uh, 2023 brought a resurgence to the convention after two difficult pandemic years, but here's CNET's coverage, and we're going to talk about some of that. So let's take a look. Um, let's first of all, so the, so these are CNET's big. Uh, this is what CNET thinks are the big takeaways. Man, I wish I could go to CNET. Uh, that's maybe one of these years I'll go to that, but for the time being, I'm just going to live through their coverage. So first off, well, first of all, let's do the the too long didn't read. If you read only one CNET recap, make it this one. If you read two, check out our other list of big tech tw trends for 2023. I tell you what, let's do that one tomorrow, okay? We'll do that one. We'll do that one. Let me let me just click on that. Uh, uh oh, I'll open that in a new tab, and that will be our plan for tomorrow. We'll go through this one. Let me go ahead and paste this one in the comments. This is the uh, article that we're looking at today. So first and foremost, a flying car. It's really happening. We've been waiting for flying cars since the day of the Jetsons, and now they appear to be on the precipice of realizing that dream. And by we, I mean a company called ASCA, which has revealed the A5 flying car at CES. More than a concept car, the ASCA has an opening pre-order. Okay, so that's cool. So it's got an opening pre-order of $789,000. So this flying car at CES actually has pre-order availability. Now, according to CNET here, um, the, the, the Federal Aviation Administration approval of the A5 could happen within a month. That's in quotes. So within a month, ASCA hopes that the A5 will start a ride-sharing service in 2026. So now that's pretty interesting, right? So the idea of a flying car has always been around for a long time. If you're just joining us, we are talking about the CES coverage of uh, from CES, and we are talking about a flying car that was actually presented, which is pretty cool. Um, now, here's an interesting thing about this flying car concept is the simple fact that they are talking about a ride-sharing service. Now, of course, they're waiting to get the FAA's approval on that. But by 2026, they're thinking of a ride-sharing service. Now, to my mind, to my ear, that makes a lot more sense than having your own flying car. Kind of an Uber flying car makes a lot of sense when you think about it. I think that's a pretty cool idea. And I could see that happening. 2026, man, that's three years away. That seems like a long ways away, but I bet you that will come flying by before you know it. Then we have charging your laptop while you pedal. Now, this gets pretty interesting. Treadmill desks are great, but the stationary bike desk is where the future of work from home calorie burning lies. Acer takes this a step further with the new desk bike combo that, uh, that also powers your devices as you go, making it the first bike desk of its kind to experiment with powering a whole workstation using kinetic energy. That's a pretty cool little idea too. So, so this is another device. This stationary bike, this um, energy-producing stationary bike is another device that was shown off at CES 2023 this year. It looks very cool. It was developed by Acer, and it's actually used just by pedaling the bike. You actually charge your device. So 
I guess that that's a, in response to, you know, we're doing a lot of sitting these days. They say sitting is, the, is they say that sitting is the new smoking. It's not real good for you. So maybe adding pedaling to your daily routine will help out and using it to charge up your devices might be the way to go, especially, you know, just imagine if the power grid goes out, if there's some kind of, uh, you know, some type of uh, complete failure in the power systems, or if there's brownouts or blackouts or anything like that, you can always get your work done by hopping on your bike and pedaling. Sounds like a really cool idea and pretty interesting. Next, we've got nothing but screens. The Lenovo Yoga Book 9i is a triumph of screen real estate, featuring two screens and multiple configuration options. Stacked vertically or side by side, the Bluetooth keyboard turns one screen into its own heptic keyboard or touchpad. The shape shifting laptop also comes with its own origami style sand stand that a activates and an active pin for taking advantage of the dual display. Okay, so this is a dual display laptop that you can stack side by side or you can do one over the other. I have to be totally honest with you. I've seen some of these types of devices and I do not see what their function is. I do not see what their purpose is. They've been trying to do a device like this for several years, for several, several iterations of technology. They've come out with these types of devices and I just don't see the practical application for it. But who knows? You know, I might be eating my words here in a couple of years. These things could really take off. But let's move on past that to something a little bit more interesting. The move over switch, the Steam Deck is here. So what is this? Now this I'm not familiar with. I don't spend a whole lot of time in the gaming world. But there's a new handheld gaming device in town. Coming January 26th, the long-teased Razer Edge could give the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck a run for their money. It's more tiny, it's more tiny Android tablet. It's more tiny, I think that's a typo. It's a more tiny Android tablet than the Steam Deck copycat, but the specs are impressive and it'll be $400. That ain't that bad. We're keeping our eye on it. So this looks like this is some kind of an Android tablet that's going to be coming out, the Razer Edge, an Android tablet that is going to be competing with the Steam Deck and with the Switch for gaming. So that could be interesting. I'm not that familiar with the Steam Deck either. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm not super familiar with uh, with what that is, so that'll be good. Let's look on down at the Tesla of the sea. What is this? As you've probably noticed, EVs, that's electric vehicles, are hot right now. But why stop on the road? Calandra's C8 EV hydrofoil boat is a slick ve vessel that glides along the water. So this is pretty interesting. So one of the big things at CES this year has been vehicles, which I find kind of interesting because I think vehicles, cars, and stuff like that have always been kind of an element of CES in the past. But this year seems to be really big. There's a whole section of uh, cars, mainly because so many of them, they're getting so much pressure from Tesla to create these kind of modern, exciting Types of uh, types of new electronic vehicles, so they're pretty interesting, and uh, it looks like there's a boat now, electronic, uh, an electric boat, and uh, it's made entirely of carbon fiber, including seats, and it costs three hundred ninety thousand dollars, which is not cheap, obviously. So that'll be pretty interesting to see where that goes. Up next, we have Samsung's eight K projector. It turns your wall into a big screen. So that's pretty interesting. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have any place in my house that has a wall like this. I would much rather have a TV because I've got that mounted on top of my fireplace. But, you know, maybe some people have big blank walls in their house. I'm not sure. Big TVs are cool, but big projectors may be cooler. At CES, the 2023 Samsung demoed its premier projector, an ultra-short throw projector, that can create an image 150, di 150 inches diagonally in your living room. Ultra short throw, or UST, refers to the distance from the wall. Instead of placing it at the back of the room for uh, the premier light, 
it can put it at the front. So that's pretty interesting. I could definitely see some places where that would come in handy. One of the biggest problems with projectors, if you're used to working with AV equipment, is figuring out where to put the projector. Those can be, that can always be quite a challenge. So, but I can't, I just don't see that 100, who has a 150 inch wall that's just blank? I mean, who has that? It'd make a lot more sense to just have a TV on the wall than, than that. So I don't know. You never know. You never know. There's all kinds of cool, exciting things that are available at CES that you may or may not see. So there's a bunch more here to go through. Let's, let's kind of skim through some of these. There's a uh, laptop that's glass free. TV that puts all others to shame. This is the OLED that we talked about earlier this week. $200 in under phones that are getting really good. So that's pretty interesting. Phones are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And better smart watches that you want to know if you're okay. So the smart watches are doing more and more to monitor your health. Again, I mentioned the vehicles. There's a bunch of vehicles and electronics. The thinnest gaming laptop in the world. That's from Alienware, Invisible Laptop Touch, Giant Leaps of PC Gamers who also have consoles. What's this about? The Dell Concept NYX Gaming Controller. Looks like it, at first glance it's just another third-party Xbox controller, albeit with some fancy la lights. Alas, it's more than that. The NYX controller is tricked out with a bunch of hidden inputs which multiply the functionality of the controller. The idea seems to be bridge the gap between gamepad and keyboard. Okay, that's pretty interesting. PC gamers are able to use hotkeys and setups. Okay, so a new controller, that's good. Roku has entered the chat. So Roku has announced that they are expanding into TVs, uh, essentially competing with their own partnership with more established makers such as TCL. Uh, Hasten and Sharp. Uh, so Roku's getting in making their own TVs. In the past, they've partnered with TCL to make TVs for them. And some upgrades coming to your laptop with some, of course, they show all the latest gaming, uh, all the latest gaming technology, desktop technology, and everything along those lines. So lots of cool, exciting things at CES. We will continue to cover a little bit more of that tomorrow with stuff that's going on. Pretty cool, exciting stuff. I hope that you join me again for that tomorrow, and we will cover all of that for the rest of the day. It's hump day. It's Wednesday. I hope that you have a great day today. Have lots of fun, and we will see you again tomorrow.